What's going on, Fishaholics? Just got out on here in the water, and uh, it's about quarter to five in, in the morning. It took me a little while to get out here. I was actually up at 2.30, but uh, I haven't been in the kayak in a while, so it took a while for me just to get everything ready and, uh, you know, and set so that I can come out here in the water and hopefully catch some stripers. And uh, supposedly there's some larger fish that followed, you know, a huge push of adult bunker that came up here into the bay. And hopefully I'll get a shot of catching a few. So what I'm going to start off doing is just trolling around, you know, this really large uh, swim bait here. And, um, you know, hopefully catch a fish on it. If I don't catch a fish on it, then I'm just going to use it as a, like, you know, something, give me something to do while I'm kind of trolling around looking for, you know, a school of adult bunker. And then once I hopefully find a school of adult bunker, uh, then I'll probably maybe do some snagging and dropping or uh, some snagging and live lining. And hopefully that's enough to get a slob or, you know, a big bass in the yak tonight. Or tonight, I mean this morning. <laughs> One tip I want to share with you guys, since that I'm, you know, starting off the day trolling, is, uh, you know, one question or big question that I always get on my channel is, uh, how much line do you know to let out when you're trolling? And I mean, it all depends on the current, you know, the speed that you're traveling at, and as well as the weight of the bait that you're fishing with, and actually the diameter of the braided line you're fishing with. I'm fishing with 50 pound test uh, Power Pro braid. So I have, I have a thin diameter. I mean, you know, that swim bait's about four ounces. So that thing gets down there pretty deep. And um, I mean, for the most part, I'll just keep letting line out, maybe say every five, 10 minutes until I hit bottom. You know, unless I'm fishing, you know, really deep water. Oh, like I just hit bottom there and I'm in 16 feet of water and I'm slowly dropping, um, going down to 18. Now I'm dropping really quick to 20 feet. So I can even, you know, slow my speed of the kayak down a little bit and that'll help that swim bait like kind of go down with the drop off or I can just keep letting out more line. And, you know, believe it or not, a lot of times if you keep letting out line and that bait swims down that drop off, you can get a bite that way. Happens a lot of times, whether you're fishing with a swim bait or, you know, an umbrella rig or a tube, it's, uh, it's an effective way to get a bite. But it all depends. I mean, you gotta kind of find the bottom now we're you know now we're dropping off really quick to 35 almost 40 feet of water looking pretty good just not marking any bait yet that's that's the only thing i'm worried about massive school of bunker in here wow Oh, just got a solid hit. Really good hit. Ooh, got some really good marks on the screen right here. Definitely some fish. I'm getting a lot of like little like taps, like kind of like a schooly bass is coming up and just mouthing the end of the bait. There he is. I don't know what the heck this is. <laughs> it's not a, it's not, I don't think it's a bass. I think I snagged a bunker. What the heck is this? Oh my gosh. You're gonna get a kick out of this. What did I say? I said that I felt like I kept getting a lot of bites. And this is what it was. Little schooly runty bass coming up and hitting that bait. <laughs> See you later, little buddy. Little tiny fish. All right, I'll drop this back down there one more time. Now I'm gonna kind of go back over where that where I was marking a lot of bunker snag some bunker and uh, start to live line in a little bit sun is just starting to come up kind of want to at least catch one or two big fish before it gets too late in the morning all right I'm back on some bunker here got bunker popping around like crazy I'm gonna switch gears
No way. No way. Oh my god. This. Oh my gosh. This bass crushed the swim bait right as I was pulling it through the school of a uh, bunker. Jesus. I was just about to give up on this swim bait too. Oh my gosh. This is a little bit bigger fish. <laughs> a little bit better than that 20 inch here I caught. Oh yeah, this feels awesome. This fish was holding it for like, at least like five seconds. I didn't even realize he had it. He definitely choked it. Oh. Not a giant, but definitely close to a keeper. Not a bad bass. Good way to, I guess, technically start the morning. I don't know if I can consider the 20 inch are really starting the morning off. It's probably about 27, maybe 28 if you stretch them. That's why I use two hooks on this giant swim bait. See you later, buddy. Crazy fish. That was easy. Whoa, freaking jumped in the boat. <laughs> it's a good size one too. Got him right in the head, <clears throat> not too large. I like to hook them right through the top jaw, out through the nostril. I forgot my sinkers, so I'm gonna use just a lead jig head, like this right here, this bare jig head. I'm sure a striper's not really gonna care what kind of weight I have, <laughs> as long as it's down there in the strike zone. Oh, just got thumped. Gotta take her. There he is. No! Oh, he got off. Ah, oh, he took, took my bait. Dang it, I didn't let him eat it long enough. Ah, oh, could have been a little one too. He just had the tail maybe, I don't know, but dang. All right, got to snag a, a new bait. Oh geez, look at this. I caught one on the line and then I snagged one. I'm gonna take this smaller guy here that I snagged. Try and throw that one back. That was a two for one deal. That was pretty sweet. I think the one reason why I lost that last fish that I had on is because I definitely uh, didn't let him eat it long, you know, long enough. Probably should have counted to like 10 in my head or something. You know, I don't think there's too many large fish around either. I mean, if that was like a 30 pounder, he would have got that bait in one gulp. It was probably like a 28, 30 inch fish. This bunker though that I'm using now is a little bit more bite size. Definitely seems like the bite is gone. The tide is getting pretty low. It's almost slack tide. Let's see what time it is. Just got to pick up. Just got to pick up. I'm letting him eat it. Letting him eat it. There he is. Got him. 
Oh yeah, that feels good. I'm on the money. Okay. That little bunker paid off big time. Okay, it feels like a good fish. There we go. At one point there was like, you know, 20 boats around me. Oh, this guy's ripping. I was, I was really afraid I was not gonna get this bite. You know, there were so many boats around and then, you know, the tide slowed down a little bit. And finally, once all like the boats went away and the, you know, this might be the last bite that I'll be able to get on this tide or, or of the morning, but at least I got this guy, heck yeah. Not a giant, but nice bass that absolutely choked the bunker. Not a bad fish, probably like 29. 30 inches. Let's see if I can get this hook out. He got the hook pretty deep, but it's not in his gills. It's just in like a weird position. It's hard to get the pliers down there and pull it out. All right. Did a little surgery. Oh, easy, buddy. Easy, easy, easy. I'm going to get you back. Nice bass right there though. Not a giant, but I'll take it. A little bit bigger than the fish that I caught on the swim bait. Nice fish, nice fish. <laughs>